Hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden here. Welcome to a special edition of The Bible Says This. What say you? Psalms 33, verse 4. The A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. Now, my friends, I'm excited today. And this is a little different because I'm going to admit I have an axe to grind. I'm going to admit that I am here today. I am speaking up. I am coming to the rescue of a tough preacher. As a matter of fact, this particular preacher uh, has more guts, more huspa, praise the Lord, more strength than the majority of male ministers that I know out there. So you know I'm talking about a female because, you know, God only made uh, two sexes, male and female. Well, there's a woman of God out there. Uh, uh, she's an excellent singer, but I tell you, we're going to play a clip of her message. She preached a message the other day that Brother Wooden agrees with 100%. I agree with what she said. I agree with how she said it. And I pray that she continues to declare the truth of God without apology. And here's the key, without apology. Thus far, she's been a much more brave than a lot of male preachers, these macho guys. A lot of you guys are filled with bravado because you are a paper tiger. You will fold like a cheap tent the moment you get just a little resistance. Gary, I know some preachers who met with Donald Trump, met with Trump. I mean, I never got the memo that you can't meet with a presidential candidate to see what they have to say. And because uh, 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 Roland Martin and some of the others gave just a little pushback, because, you know, they can't give much pushback, gave just a little pushback, some of these preachers folded like a cheap tent. I mean, took it all back. So a lot of times before I jump into a fight, when I see someone make a stand for what is right, I want to see if they're going to stand their ground because there's no point in me trying to support you if you're going to be a coward and take back what God has said. I remember when President Obama uh, stood in 2000, and I think it was 2012, and endorsed same-sex marriage. That was a minister, I forget his name, an older gentleman. He came on CNN and he was, oh, he railed at President Obama. He talked about how it was wrong and it was against the scripture and how they would have to stand against him only the next day to take it all back. Well, uh, so much for being a, a man of God who had the courage of his convictions and he folded like a cheap tent and yet there is this female pastor out there, female pastor standing her ground and she is being hit from the north, south, east and west. Yep, I'm talking about Kimberell, Pastor Kimberell. Kimberly, Kimberly. Hey, Kimmy, listen, I'm excited for you, a woman of God. Uh, uh, whether you want my support or not, on this you have it. And I am so proud of you for standing your ground. Now, I want to read some scriptures and I want to talk about it. Now, Kim was in her church, we're going to play it for you, preaching to her congregants. And she talked about those who have the homosexual spirit. Oh, there I go. I, I guess now all the labels are coming out because, you know, uh, now the new protected class in America is the LGBTQ and whatever else alphabet that go along with that community. You can't disagree with them. You can't have, have an honest discussion. Oh, my Lord, you can't bring up the Bible. You can't say it's wrong. You can't even you can't even. You can't even use words that are accurate, such as perverted. If definitions are true, to pervert a thing is to use it in a manner that it was not designed. Everybody knows that male homosexual sex is perversion. Everybody knows that female lesbian sex is perversion. If the, it, it's perverted, if the whole human race practiced it and it only, it would mean the extinction of the human race in less than a hundred years. Cause let me tell you something, ladies, you lesbians out there, spit. You can't get babies from that. And you guys out there, you can't, you can't make babies from, uh, uh, 
what you do. So, Kim Burrell, Kim Burrell, let me get back to Kim. Kim preached the truth. Kim had the nerve to call out those who are struggling with the homosexual spirit. Now, I didn't find anything she said hateful. I thought it was quite compassionate. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't say you're going to hell, you ought to die right now. She did offer the altar. She did offer repentance. She, 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 she talked about it in a manner where a person can't get delivered. And I guess therein is the rub. Homosexuals today no longer believe that they need to be delivered. And if you somehow believe that homosexuals need to be delivered from a deviant lifestyle that even cuts their lifespan, the average homosexual male lives on average 20 years less than his uh, heterosexual counterpart. We have PSA commercials warning people against smoking when smoking on average shaves 13.5 years off the human lifespan off of those who smoke cigarettes. Well, homosexual lifestyle uh, shaves 20 years off the homosexual male's uh, lifespan. And so we have commercials warning against smoking. But if you speak against this wicked practice, which I don't even call a lifestyle, it's a death style. Because again, if everyone participated in it, it would wipe out the human race. The blessings of fecundity are not extended to homosexual and lesbian behavior. Now, Kim talked about it. But she preached what preachers preach. Oh, she preached what preachers preach, black and white, especially black preachers, before Obama. You know, Obama changed the black preacher. And I want to say to the brothers out there, uh, the black male preachers out there, hey, man, Obama's time's up. In just a few more weeks, he'll be gone. So you come on, you, you, can, you can join. You can go back to preaching all of the Bible now. It's all right to declare homosexuality as sin, lesbianism as sin, like the Bible says, because Obama is gone. Now, Kim was preaching in her own church. About like, you know, Lot, when he uh, took some angels to his own house. According to Genesis chapter 19, uh, there, verse 1, and there came two angels to Sodom uh, uh, at evening, and Lot sat in the gate, and Lot seeing the, uh, them, ro he arose to meet them, and, and he fell to the ground, he bowed himself to them, and look, in verse 2, he, he invited them to come and stay at his house. His house. And they finally, you know, they, they acquiesced. They took him up on it. They, at first, they said, we're going to stay in the streets all night. Lot said, you don't want to stay in these streets. <laughs> Not in this city. So they acquiesced and agreed with Lot. And uh, look at what happened. The Bible says, and, and uh, in, in, in verse 4 of Genesis 19, it says, but before they laid down, before they could even go to bed, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed. They surrounded the house round about. Look at this, both old and young. All the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out that we may know them. They weren't saying bring them out so we could introduce ourselves. Hey, my name is so and so. And what's your name? But know that you die. We want to have sex with them. We want to rape them. Now, these are men in Lot's private home, just as Kim Burrell was preaching at her church. Isn't it amazing now? Homosexuals want to be able to control what you say uh, in the street. They want to be able to control what you say at church. There was a couple the other day that the homosexual community came after because they are members of a church. They are members of a church that agrees with the Bible on this subject. So the homosexuals felt like these people shouldn't have a TV show. Man, who died and made the LGBTQ community God? I'm telling you right now, I'm calling for preachers to stand their ground, for people to stand their ground and push back. After a while, we won't be able to preach the Bible if things continue to go the way they're going. And you coward preachers out there, God's going to shut, he's going to shut your church down. He's going to remove your candlestick if you don't begin to preach the truth. 
For what good are you if you won't preach the truth? Whatever happened to preaching the word of God in season and out of season? Whatever happened to standing your ground on God's truth? Whatever happened to, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord? What happened to you? What happened to you? You answer that question. I'm getting a little upset, Gary. Let me calm down. Now, look at this. They went to his house. They wanted to, to rape these men. And Lot went out at the door and said unto them, he shut the door behind him. And he says, brethren, do not so wickedly. He says, brethren, excuse me, do not so wickedly. Uh, behold now, he says, I have two daughters. What kind of man would do this? I have two daughters. Look. Uh, Lot's, uh, his, uh, his morals were messed up. This guy's going to offer his daughters to these perverts. He was trying to be hospitable. You know, back in that day, uh, you, you had to take care of your guests. It was expected. You had to show hospitality. But that's, that's too much for me because there's no way in this world I would offer my, my daughter. Uh, he says, uh, do what, what seemed good in your eyes to them. Lot know that had he let his daughters go out there, the girl would have stayed out there all night. And they would have never been touched because the, the, the perverts, yes, I'm using the word perverts, didn't want the girls. They didn't want anyone who you could uh, have sex with according to natural design. They wanted perverted, immoral, ungodly, wicked sex. Now call me homophobic, call me anything you want. We live in a day now where people are trying to silence you by using labels. Labels, but I'm not homophobic. I'm not, I don't have a fear of homosexuals. I am uh, Christocentric. I am a believer in the Bible, and the Bible is right. So here's what they said to, to Lot. I want to talk about Kim Burrell now. They said, behold now, uh, Lot says I got two daughters and, and all that. And so here's what they, they said to him. They said, stand back. And they said again, um, uh, I want, uh, uh, to this, he, they said this about him. This one fellow came in to sojourn. And he needs, and he will needs be a judge. Oh, even back then, when you spoke against them or you disagreed with them, they would call you a judge. Now, this is Genesis chapter 19, verse 9. How about getting your Bible out and reading, reading the thing you'll see for yourself. This fellow came in to sojourn, and now he needs uh, be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they press for the door. They says, we let you stay here and you're going to judge us. Oh, my Lord. It sounds like what they're doing to Kim Burrell. You're going to judge us with these hateful words. My Lord, when you disagree, the new definition of hate is, to dis is disagreement with homosexuals and lesbians for any reason on any subject at any time. If you disagree, you are a hater. You are a hater. Even some of these uh, so-called gospel uh, art, uh, uh, artists, the ever popular, ever smart, Yolanda Adams, hateful words are never profitable to the cause of Christ in this world. Jesus said they will know you by your love. Really? Now, is that all Jesus said, uh, uh, Yolanda? And what was hateful about Kim Burrell, your sister, by the way, your sister singer, gospel artist, female, in the business, preaching the word, everything she says lines up with scripture. She spoke against the homosexual spirit. She talked about how a, a, a guy, an inarticulate, babbling idiot could all end up on Jimmy Kimmel by embarrassing the church world and the world laughing at the church. The, 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 the lady talked about how, how terrible that is. Now, what was hateful about that? Nothing was hateful about what uh, uh, Yolanda, uh, what, what Kim, Burrell, Kim Burrell said. Kim Burrell told the truth. Now, this is just the first portion because my time's running out. And, you know, I like to do these in 15 minute segments because, you know, uh, they say that we, you know, anything beyond that is too long. Our life, our, our attention span <laughs> is gone. I saw a commercial the other day and the girl said the, the, the voice of the commercial said the girl's attention span was eight seconds. I'm wondering today if we have that. But listen, I'm going to talk to you. I want I want I want to talk about some of uh, Kim Burrell's friends because Kim. Kim, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to make a decision. In the next segment, I'm going to talk about the decision 
that Kim Burrell has got to make. Join me for the next segment of The Bible Says This, What Say You?